when it was, you know, and she never fought. She never did. And next thing you know, she's dead. And I'm like, huh, this is great. And I guess, I don't know, I got scared or nervous or I don't Hello. know. It was juicy. It didn't taste like blood, though. I mean, it tastes like a charboard piece of steak. This story will give you goosebumps. A Tennessee man didn't just kill his victim. He also chopped off her head, her hands, and her feet. Buried her torso in a burn pile outside his home and also ate some of her remains. In a small Tennessee town on June 8, 2014, Jason Walker got a creepy surprise from his neighbor, Gregory Scott Hale. Scott asked Jason about his backhoe, but it turned into something way scarier, a joke about hiding evidence. Things got weirder when Scott pointed at buckets near his burn pit, hinting at something sinister. Three hours later at 9.30 p.m., Jason Walker rushed to the Coffee County Sheriff's Department anxious to share something urgent. He believed his neighbor's joke wasn't a joke at all and needed the police to hear it out. Recognizing the seriousness of the situation, he radioed for two more officers, Deputy Rainey and criminal investigator Dendy, to accompany Jason back to his home to investigate the story further. When they arrived at Jason's property, the investigators entered through the back of Scott's house, driving without headlights. The beams of flashlight shone on the two five-gallon buckets and investigator Dendy grabbed a garden hoe to reach over the fence and snag the handle of the closest bucket. Grasping the lid, he peeled it off to reveal the ghastly contents, causing all three men to gasp back in horror. Inside were a woman's severed head and hand. Scott was obsessed with Richard Ramirez, the night stalker who sexually assaulted women, killed them, and then took their valuables. In one of his posts, he posted, R.I.P. Night Stalker, wish I could have met you. Scott was a self-proclaimed Satanist whose interests included weapons, venomous snakes, and cannibalism. He shared his views proudly on his Facebook page and blog, with one comment being, I was thinking today and wondered if someone was to become a cannibal and eat a vegetarian. Would the vegetarian taste like that fake soy meat like they got in some fast food places? Gregory had previously worked at a slaughterhouse until he was fired after his boss discovered he had been taking animal bones, animal blood, and even eyeballs back to his house, allegedly to perform satanic rituals. Two days before the police found the buckets on June 6th, a woman named Lisa Marie Heider was shown in CCTV footage entering an Oak Liquor store. She traveled up from where she lives in Dunlap, Tennessee to spend time with her ex-husband and six of her children, the youngest of whom is only a year old. She scans the back shelves, curling her long auburn ponytail around her fingers and adjusting her large black sunglasses before walking up to Scott, who had just passed her in the aisle. It was later suspected that the reason she approached him was because she needed a ride since her ex-husband was unloading a truck in Huntsville and couldn't get to her until he was finished. According to her ex-husband, Lisa had been dealing with alcoholism lately, which led to their split a few months ago. But even before, she had struggled with addiction. Recently, she received devastating news, being diagnosed with ovarian cancer and given only six months to live. This news hit her hard, causing her to drink heavily, spiral emotionally, and behave more recklessly than usual. As she's talking to both the man and the cashier, she adjusts her sunglasses, and for a brief moment, a black eye is visible. It's unknown how she got that, but later she is seen leaving the store with Scott. Going back to the crime scene, the deputies radioed for backup, ordering crime scene units to be deployed immediately and for search warrants to be written. As backup arrives, they head into the Scott residence to place Gregory Scott Hale under arrest. They find him sleeping on a couch in one of the filthy garages of his parents' house, where he had to move in with his 14-year-old son after losing his job. Scott had decided to use old Halloween props from a haunted attraction he had worked at the previous year to decorate his space. He does not attempt to resist, and when initially confronted, he admits to being the one who killed the woman. He confesses to placing her limbs and head in the two buckets and burying the rest of her in the nearby burn pit. The police take him into custody, and in the following, we will hear an interview from that night. The 37-year-old Scott stated that Lisa found him so attractive and had come up to him to ask him to take her to his home, and she had decided she wanted to live with him in his mom's house. We did have it was consensual, and she wanted to be choked, and you know, us being drunk, and it got carried away, and I guess I strangled her. And he said that she begged him to choke her, which he did by tightening a shirt around her neck, 
She didn't fight back, and then she died. However, in the autopsy report, the hyoid bone and thyroid cartilage are intact, and no contusions of the neck are seen. The autopsy conclusively ruled that Lisa's death was caused by homicidal violence. Scott said that he didn't give her CPR because he didn't know how to. Instead, he smacked her face, opened her eyelids, and said that her pupils didn't dilate or anything. Then he covered her up with a blanket in the love seat and put her underneath a boat. He threw some stuff on top of her in case his parents looked over. He waited until they were asleep and let his dark side take over because he said that he had personality issues. Scott's made efforts to make himself seem troubled or possibly insane by saying that he's been suffering from sleep paralysis, didn't stay in rehab for even one day, and claimed that he only drinks and smokes weed, but not the other hardcore drugs. Aside from all this, it's unknown what his official diagnosis is, but based on his lifestyle, it's guessed he has antisocial personality disorder. When his parents went to sleep, Scott went and laid down beside Lisa to touch her. He said that she was starting to get cold and a little rigor mortis, but not too bad. He looked over at her and thought that she was faking it, so he went to get his long gray blade, which had a machete handle with duct tape on it. He cut her head first, but when he continued with her body, the blade was taking too long, so he took his axe. He cut off her hands and her feet and then decided to eat her. He cut off some of her rump and backstrap because it was the tastiest part for Scott. He then flipped Lisa's body over, cut off her belly and reached up inside to cut her heart. He slung it over the backyard fence. He lit up a fire to try and burn her remains in order to then bury them. While it was cooking, he ate some piece of meat off a leg. It was juicy. It didn't taste like blood though. I mean, it tasted like a charboard piece of steak. He also admitted to the investigators that he thought about keeping her skull as a Halloween mask decoration, but decided not to. After three hours of investigation, Scott signed his confession and pleaded guilty to first-degree murder on January 15, 2015. He claimed that he was charged and sentenced unjustly on the grounds of religious persecution, with the religion in question implied to be Satanism. But ultimately, this was how Lisa died. If you want to hear more interesting stories like hers, follow and subscribe.